Welcome to Awakened Path Radio, helping to spread love and light for the highest and greatest good. I'm your host, Reverend Candace Nadine Breen, Independent Spiritualist Minister and Healing Minister. For more information, including show updates, courses, workshops, events, resources, and more, visit my website at www.awakenedpathonline.com. Again, that's www.awakenedpathonline.com. Now on to today's show. Today I have with me Reverend John Madura, who is the current president of the National Spiritual Alliance. He is a certified healer and medium. Welcome to our show today, John. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on the show. So for those who don't know about the National Spiritual Alliance, could you begin by giving a brief background about the organization? Sure. The National Spiritual Alliance is uh, 104 years old um, as of September. Mm. It had its beginnings in uh, and remains in Lake Pleasant, Massachusetts, mm-hmm. um, which is one of the five villages of the town of Montague. Lake Pleasant originally began as a um, Methodist camp meeting um, village for summer folk. It then became a spiritualist um, camp meeting uh, area oh in the 1860s 1870s and actually Lake Pleasant is the oldest um, spiritualist or surviving spiritualist community mm. from that from that era. Um, the New England Camp Meeting Association, which resided there, had its own a uh, large temple, and they were part of the um, National Association of Spiritualist Churches. Um, Reverend Tabor Thompson um, was president of the Camp Meeting Association. He also published a, um, I think it was a monthly publication called um, the National Spiritual Alliance. Um, the building that we now have our temple in, I be- we believe, was the original print house for that. Reverend Tabor Thompson um, uh, was pastor of, he, uh, he well originally he he was a, um, a Baptist minister um, serving a couple of churches out in Pennsylvania and then he became involved in spiritualism and pastored a spiritualist church in Philadelphia so he would come up um, for the summers to Lake Pleasant mm-hmm. which is when the uh, New England Camp Meeting Association met um, on or around 1912, um, 1913, there was a group that broke away from the Camp Meeting Association, and they broke away over the concept of reincarnation. Yeah. As many people probably know today, the National Association of Spiritual Churches does not believe in reincarnation. Whereas um, the National Spiritual Alliance, uh, we do believe of the possibility of coming back, um, particularly when making our life plan once we go to the other side. And it's determined that there's something that we have to learn. And the only way we can learn it is by experiencing it back here on the earth plane. So that's how it uh, had its beginnings. Um, Reverend Tabor Thompson was the first president, um, and he died in 1915, so just two years after um, TNSA began. Mm. But curiously, we thought that he had left the Camp Meeting Association, but when we came across his obituary, 
he was still listed as being the president of the Camp Meeting Association. So he was president of bo both organizations at the time. Wow. Um, during, um, and I'm going to say TNSA instead of the National Spiritual Alliance. Yep, that's fine. Um, during um, the 20s and 30s, um, we had about 250 charter churches, almost 400 ministers, <clears throat> and a membership of over 10,000 people. And this, this was nationwide. And in fact, we also had um, churches and societies in um, Mexico and South America. And, you know, um, when I first be began at uh, TNSA, we had um, no charter churches. Hmm. Um, so you can see that over the years, as, uh, as has happened to many denominations, they just dwindled over time. Um, but um, Lake Pleasant survived, and it survives still today. Hmm. And I'm pleased to really say that right now we have four charter churches. Um, and we have about almost 40 ministers. So um, we're, we're growing again. And I hope that continues. Mm. Yeah, that's very good. Now, how, how, um, what led you to, um, and you know, you're the current president of the TNSA, but what, mm -hmm. what was your journey like to get there, to get there? What led you there? Well, I'm a, um, not only am I an ordained spiritualist minister through TNSA, but I'm also an ordained reformed Catholic priest. Oh. Um, so what does that mean? Um, that means that I belong to a, 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 a group that um, ascribes to the Catholic teachings, uh, the Episcopal teachings. We're free to uh, do our services in any format that we feel comfortable with. Um, our sacraments are recognized by the Vatican. However, we do not take any instruction from the Vatican or the Pope. Mm -hmm. So I had a small parish here in my hometown of Adams. And for the summer, um, we decided to uh, start exploring and, and experiencing other denominations. Mm -hmm. So we visited... Uh, uh, Methodist churches and, and congregational churches, and we visited synagogues. And then we came across the National Spiritual Alliance in Lake Pleasant and visited there. And I just fell in love with the community and its principles and the concepts of spiritualism. Mm. And a lot of people, well, I should say the, the pure spiritualists, um, take issue perhaps with the Catholic Christian community. Yeah. Although they uh, are many of the original founders of spiritualism came from Christian denominations and spiritualist hymns um, uh, came from that era. In fact, Tabor Thompson, our founder, is known as the psychic songster. He actually was commissioned and produced the first hymnal for the National Church, um, of which we have, we have a couple of copies. Yeah. What he used to do is he would take the Christian hymns of that time and he would reword them so that they were more appropriate for spiritualism. Mm. Um, so anyways, I fell in love with Lake Pleasant and uh, became a member. It was very easy to become a member of TNSA um, and then started attending services and um, uh, found that um, they needed some help with regard to administration and um, maybe a little bit different uh, um, forethought with regard to other denominations. So, um, so I got more involved. Um, curiously, um, as we st I did some, started doing some research uh, in the past because there's not a lot of uh, documentation that's available. But I came across um, a couple of record books. You see, every summer there was a convention held in Lake Pleasant. So all the churches used to come and the representatives and they would meet for a few weeks and all these great mediums would come. Yeah. Um, so we had these, uh, these, these documents and we started looking at the type of churches that um, TNSA was chartering. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And by no means were they pure spiritualist churches. They were chartering Christian spiritualist churches, purist spiritualist churches, um, churches that ascribe to the Old Testament rather than the New Testament. Um, it was really, really interesting. And, and um, then we started looking at the actual name. Mm. And the name is the National Spiritual Alliance. Yes. So we looked at that word spiritual and we said, you know, that's different than the National Association of Spiritualist Churches. So what did the original founders, what was their intent by using the word spiritual? And we believe that because they kept the word spiritualist out of it, that they wanted to kind of do a, uh, an, interfaith, um, uh, an interfaith type of theology where they actually welcomed people into the TNSA community who came from varied backgrounds, uh, varied uh, denominational and theological backgrounds. And rather than having them put all of that aside, I believe that the intent was for them to say, no, we welcome those, um, those thoughts and ideas. And you can commingle those with spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Because after all, what is spiritualism? But actually communicating with those who have departed to the other side. Mm -hmm. And any religion, which is the majority of religions in the world, believes in life after death. Right. So spiritualism works very, very well in, in conjunction with most of the other major denominations. So that's how I came into, um, into Lake Pleasant. And uh, at the time, I was also um, chief financial officer for a major nonprofit in the area. So that kind of administrative background just worked really well. Um, yeah, so that's how I got there. Well, it's very, you know, a lot of people, um, I've mentioned the National Spiritual Alliance to a couple of friends of mine, and uh, they thought that they had to be pure spiritualist, like you had mentioned, um, mm -hmm. that they had to be pure spiritualist in order to be a part of it. And it's interesting that you explain how um, uh, the, the beginnings of the organization mm -hmm. and to how the opening the doors to... Um, people who are not, uh, organ churches who are not, um, and people who are not pure spiritualists. Right. So um, how do you see um, the TNSA as being of service to the, the entire spiritual community, the, uh, the spiritual community as a whole? I know you touched upon it um, briefly, but going forward. Um, you know, um well, let me say that Lake Pleasant is an out-of-the-way community. I mean, you really have to know how to get there. To Once you get there, it, then you know how to get there all the time. Mm. You seem to always fight that thing of, well, is it location or whatever. But people seem to come find us when they, when they feel the need to find us. It's a beautiful area. We're right on the shores of Lake Pleasant. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's a great location. Um, but again, it's a brick and mortar facility. And um, our, our goal is to do what the our original founders uh, wanted us to do. And that was to spread out. So we're constantly looking for people who are good candidates um, for ministry, who have the ability and have the desire to perhaps uh, develop a community in their location. Um, so as an example, we have a community out in Arizona. Wow. We have a couple of ministers down in South Carolina. And if anybody knows the, the religious climate in South Carolina, spiritualism is not one of their favored sure. uh, denominations. Mm -hmm. uh, um, we have a couple of ministers who um, reside uh, during the great months of the year down in the Bahamas. So they practice their, um, their religion down there. And again, that's another area that spiritualism is not um, one of the favorite denominations. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a charter church in New York. We have uh, one in Key, New Hampshire. Um, so, I mean, we're really, and, and that's our major goal to do that, to return back to what we were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. 
another way that we're um, hoping to um, to help out in is a um, an educational program that we're developing under the name of Tabor Thompson Institute. Mm. If people are familiar with Morris Pratt, Morris Pratt is a long-term um, educational arm um, of the National Sp Association of Spiritualist Churches. Um, if anyone has taken that program, it's, it's a 30 course program of, of which I am a graduate. I, I took that program. Um, it's very, um, it has a lot of information. So well, what we're doing is we're trying to take something similar to that and condense it um, to do a couple of things, not only just to do minister training, but to, um, you know, branch out into some other areas like chaplaincy, maybe um, and animal um, chaplaincy um, and how we're trying to do that is uh, using the internet and trying to do online classes so that's our next goal we we have Tabor Thompson set up um, right now what we're doing is we're developing our classes so that people can take the classes at their leisure online and get their certificates of completion um, it's kind of uh, interesting the way it's set up. Initially, anybody who wants to progress into either being, say, a certified healer or a certified medium, or if they're looking for minister training, they all have to complete what we call this core set of classes. And that would be a couple of classes on spiritualism, spiritual healing, um, a few classes on mediumship, and um, also meditation. So everybody has to complete those core set of classes. And then from there, there on, they can uh, apply to participate in the other uh, modules. Um, and those are the things that we're working on at, at the present. So that's what our future is, is to kind of utilize, um, utilize the Internet and um, re doing some uh, much more reach out um, in that way. Right. And um, the courses that... Are there scholarships for uh, those people who may not be able to afford it? Are you offering anything? Are the courses um, affordable? Things like that. Because I know some of these online schools for, for yeah. you know, they can be very pricey. And it's, Absolutely. Yeah, right. and it sort of uh, causes people to not want to participate in it. Well, I can tell you that um, um, at this point we haven't set up any kind of scholarship program mm -hmm. because our rates are – pretty affordable. Mm -hmm. I think the last series of face-to-face -face courses that we offered for, uh, for the course set of courses was $175. Yeah. And that was, um, I think, a total of seven classes. Um, wow. so, I mean, that was really reasonable, you know. Great. Our concept, I mean, our, 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 sure, we would like to have some additional income come in to help support it, but our main goal is to um, educate people on spiritualism and know that um, everybody has the abilities to heal and everyone has the ability with people on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, some of us are born with, um, with, the, with that ability that's already instilled in us, mm -hmm. um, but most of us have to develop it mm -hmm. and um, it's a fun way to do it actually, you know. Mm -hmm. It's yes, the on online, you know, the world is moving online. <laughs> so Absolutely, yeah. And it's good to take advantage of it and um, spread your uh, mission that way. Great. Now, I, for those who've never been to um, Lake Pleasant, um, could you? Exp is it sort of like a a camp, like you know how spiritualist camps are set up? Um, so let me tell you what it is right now. Um, actually, there is only one spiritualist now in this community. It's now a community of homes. I mean, you have to understand that uh, during the camp meeting days, there were tent sites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And those tent sites were sold. Um, in fact, just to let you know that the building that we are in, the, the, um, the Thompson Temple, sits on seven or eight tent sites, individual oh, wow. tent sites. Mm -hmm. So they're like maybe a 20 by 20. 20 foot lot or 20 by 30 foot lot and a lot of times um, what people did is they bought multiple lots and then they built cottages on them mm -hmm. so that's what Lake Pleasant now is is a community of these older style cottages mm -hmm. 
um, back in 1907, there was a major fire that destroyed uh, more than half of the cottages in the community in Lake Pleasant. Mm -hmm. So um, it took a while for that community to recover. And um, they did, um, but not as well as what they did, you know, and not, not the same kind of um, further, fervor that they had before the fire. Um, so that's kind of like what Lake Pleasant is now. You have a lot of, of these older cottages that people have rehabbed, and most of them look pretty well. And you have some other cottages that, um, you know, could use some, use some help. Mm -hmm. Um, but the community itself is a pretty tight-knit community. In fact, we host the, uh, um, the meeting for the Lake Pleasant Village Association. So they, they meet in our, in our temple. That's excellent. Yeah. You know, so I, 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 I've um, gone up to uh, Camp Etna and, um, mm -hmm. and um, the same situation there with, uh, you know, they're trying, there is sort of um resurgence of interest and they have some cottages there uh, that uh, are people living year round and some that just seasonal and there are some that need work and also a fire destroyed um, quite a bit of uh, the tent sites and the cottages mm -hmm. uh, I forgot when it was but it was in the early 1900s and um, do you see people as um, do you see that there's an, a need in the community, in the, in the world at large, for spiritualism? Do you see people gravitating towards it, pulling away? What are your thoughts about that? What I see is um, I, a lot of people who carry um, significant hurt yeah. and, um, that they've experienced from other denominations. Mm -hmm. So they, they come to us for healing um, in, the, in, in that one sense. I experience, we experience a lot of people that have um, some significant uh, personal issues that they can't resolve through, uh, through either through a counselor or through um, their, um, their pastor at their other religious denomination. So they come to us looking for messages from the beyond. Um, I can say that when we hold, we hold weekly services and um, often more than 50% of the people that attend are not members. Hmm. These are people that come um, looking for some sort of information or some kind of solace. So yeah, there's a lot of folks out there that are, are actually looking for um, a, a community to belong to, I guess. But the issue that I think we have, as well as all other denominations, is people don't like to commit to anything mm. any longer. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, years ago when I went to church, you went faithfully every Sunday. You donated faithfully every Sunday, no matter if it was a dime in the basket or a dollar in the basket. Right. Yeah, um, yeah. You made that commitment. And today people are competing with, you know, going to church on Sunday or do they take their children to their soccer games or swimming or, you know, so there's all this competition going on and folks have kind of lost that. That, that personal commitment, you know, um, and I think that's what's happening here in New England, at least. I think it's different down south. Mm. Yeah, down south is a different world sometimes, yeah. I think. Yeah. But I agree that there are, there's a lot of competition for, t for people's time on Sunday yeah. I, or even Saturdays. Uh, people have things to do. They're, they're, not, they're not setting aside that time because other things take preference. And how do you feel, how do you, um, what have you been doing or are going to do um, in order to try to reach those people who are, just don't want to commit? Do you have any ideas how to reach them, how to sort of pull them in, welcome them in? All you can do is try to get yourself at least known in the community. So mm -hmm. how do you do that? Um, yeah. I can tell you that Facebook has been a wonderful vehicle for us. Mm -hmm ability to do that mm -hmm. um, you, you know you can uh, put an event out on Facebook you can uh, just do a posting on Facebook and pay 20 30 dollars and you can reach two three four thousand people 
Um, if you get 1% of those attending, so if you had a fa an event that, that, uh, that was seen by um, 2,000 people and 1% or 20 people out of that came to that event, that's, that's, that's a success, you yes. know. Yes. And for $20, it's a, it's a great investment. So that's, you know, where we seem to be finding a lot of success with that. Mm -hmm. Um, we hold monthly psychic and medium fairs, and I can tell you that if I don't advertise via Facebook for that particular month, um, we don't get anybody coming. Oh. But if I advertise, it's a fantastic, um, it's a fantastic venue. People have a ball, and oh. we have great mediums, and um, it's it's a time when folks can come and get a lot of their uh, questions answered. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love. I always love those events, the psychic fairs. I love them. Yeah. And Facebook is. I, I've used Facebook too. It's 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 really good for for people trying to. Their their advertising uh, prices aren't aren't crazy. And, right. Um, right. You can reach so many people, and you can select your audience, and I think it's just fabulous. Yes, it is. I it is. I mean, we also have a couple of our people who do um, occasional articles in the local newspapers. So that also helps too, you know. Yeah, putting your name in, fit in front of people, that's yep. uh, important. I think it, it, even if they just pass by it, at least it's, it's in their subconscious somewhere. Exactly. exactly. Um, all right. So we've had a great in interview thus far. And how would you know some people some of our listeners might want to um, learn more about the TNSA contact you or you know um, take your classes we have a wonderful website website it's www.spiritualallianceusa.org mm -hmm. um, right. And on that website, um, we list all the events that are happening, who is speaking every Sunday. By the way, every Sunday is a different speaker, um, different medium. Very nice. Um, uh, again, folks come from a variety of different backgrounds, whether that be Christian. We even have had a, a Buddhist priest um, at one of our um, oh, really? services. Wow. Yeah, and we've had her there a couple of times. Um, and also, let's see what else would be on it. Record, Information. I don't want to interrupt, but do you record any of these? Um, no, we don't. No. Um, I can tell you that the national church in that, that resides in Chicopee, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. they do record. In fact, I speak there occasionally, and they record um, the voice recording of the, um, of the sermon or the inspirational message, and they, they post it online. That's now, we great. haven't done that yet, but that is something that we can look forward to doing in, in the future. That would be wonderful. Yeah, it would be. It mm. would be. I'm sorry to interrupt. You are that's okay. So that's one website, mm -hmm. and um, the other website, if people were interested, is uh, it crosslinks with it is a uh, www. Um, Tabor Thompson Institute. Org. Um, T a b o r Thompson T h o m p s o n Institute. Org. And you know the interesting thing here, and I don't, uh, I, I just kind of came across this a couple of years ago, but um, the name Tabor, and I don't know if any people know what Tabor is. Um, Mount Tabor is a mountain in Israel. Oh. And t the Mount Tabor is the place that Jesus took um, his apostles Peter and um, and James to to witness the transfiguration. And what the transfiguration is, is when Jesus communes with the spirits of Moses and Elijah. Oh, wow. So the name Tabor, uh, whether it, uh, it was destined to be that way or not, I, I, it just kind of like all fits together, if, if you catch my drift. With, yes, uh, I do. It, that's that's you know, With our founder was named part of that. So. Isn't that interesting? Isn't it? That is. That's so, that's so awesome. And on the on the on your um, the National Spiritual Alliance people can mm -hmm. website people can contact you as well. Yep, correct? there's a contact uh, form right there. People mm -hmm. can um, um, you know make their questions or comments. We also, we also have a, a healing page, so if people mm -hmm. want to request um, healing, they can also do that there too. 
Mm-hmm. And the healing's uh, done during the service, co- mm-hmm. correct? Well, um, actually, no. If no. We do healing service, absolutely. But the mm-hmm. healings that are requested on the webpage, what I do is I, we do distant healing between myself and um, a couple of our other healers and ministers. So I pass that information around and um, um, we send distant healing to those individuals. That's fantastic. That's excellent. So, well, John, if you don't have anything else to tell us um, about any future plans for the organization, where it's going? Well, here's what I can say that this is um, my last year as president. Oh, no. Yeah. So um, um, in July, we'll be having a, um, our annual meeting and they'll be electing a, an, another person to fill that spot. Um, I may stay on um, with the board and um, we'll see how things kind of kind of work out. Mm-hmm. I've been president. This will be my sixth year. I've been on the board for 10 years and um, it sometimes it's a, a really good idea to get some fresh blood in some fresh ideas. Mm-hmm. And I think this is a, a really good opportunity for that to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I may. Like I said, I may stay on the board in the capacity of, an, of another officer's position or um, at, because we're in a growth mode, there's a couple of other positions that we're, we're thinking about developing to um, so that we can do some additional outreach. So I might, I might go into that. So we'll see. Um, but it's going to be an exciting year. And wow, I'm, it's a lot happening. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, you know. Oh. Well, we wish you all the best in whatever you choose well, to do. Thank you very, after, very much. After this phase. And I've well, you know, I'd love to go down and visit you guys. And, uh, you know, if you get yourself uh, in, back into a, a physical situation again, mm-hmm. uh, go down and help you out. Um, oh, that's wonderful. Those I'm are the it. kind of things I'm looking forward to doing. You know? Oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm, I might call you up on that. So There you go. <laughs> Be prepared. No problem. <laughs> well, I've definitely enjoyed talking with you during this wonderful interview today. Well, John. thank you so much. It's been a pleasure for me also. Um, and I, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity. It's, it's my pleasure as well. Well, everyone, we are out of time for today. As always, you can visit www.awakenedpathonline.com for show updates, courses, workshops, events, resources, and more. Again, I'm Reverend Candace Nadine Breen, and thank you for listening to the Awakened Path Radio. Namaste and blessed be.